Well, hello. It is Friday and it is one o'clock on the button. How about that? Lucky me and a Friday that's snowing to beat the man. Wow, I can't believe how much snow we're getting today. And I guess it's only going to get worse. But we're not here to talk about the weather. That's for sure. What we want to talk about here today and what we kind of said that we we're going to talk about today is in fact working with a flash meter. So, what I've got here is I've got a, a table set up with a few different things on it, and we're going to kind of run through the whole thing. Let's imagine for just a minute that you decided, I'm going to have a new home built. So you find your builder to build a house, but he doesn't own a tape measure. He doesn't have one. He doesn't know how to use one. Whatever. How well do you think your house is going to come out? Or, for the cooks in the house, you see a beautiful meal. Man, is that gorgeous. You're scrolling through Facebook and it's pretty beautiful. But they don't give you any of the ingredients. Or they say it takes this, this, and this, and this. But they don't tell you how much of this, this, and this is needed. You're going to be able to make that? Not very readily, I'm afraid, okay? You're going to have a real problem. Oh, you fool around. You may get close, but you're not going to be right there. The fact is, everybody and their brother out there, every major company, every major trade, every major businesses use some type of metering device. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is metering devices. If you're a cook, you use one of these. Everybody knows what this is, the measuring cup. First thing in the world that you're going to use is a measuring cup. Of course, there's a lot of other things that you may use, but this is primary. This is a measuring cup. Everybody in the world has one. Everybody in the world uses one, by all means. And here's our famous tape measure. By the way, if you were working in a, in a plant someplace and you you did tool and die work kind of thing, you'd be also you'd be using what's called a micrometer. I don't have one of those to to, to kind of show, but my micrometer can measure things down to the to the thousandths of an inch kind of thing, I and mean, really minute, so everything is perfect, right on. That's what you need for for some real fine type of workmanship. We then have our cell phones. Believe it or not, they got a meter in them too. How else are they going to be able to when you put? It's going to take a photograph. It's got to register and decide the ISO. It's got to decide what aperture, shutter speed, because it makes all those decisions for you. We, we determined that before, and anybody that's used a, a cell phone should know that kind of thing. So, so it's, it's got to take measurements too. And of course comes our trusty old DSLRs, and they all take a measurement too. And that's where the rubber hits the road. A few weeks ago, we established that in order to do a quality image, to take some quality work, do quality work, you have to have control. You can't let one of these decide everything for you. You just can't. It's not going to work. So here we talked a little bit about ISO, shutter speed, all that, which we're not going to get into. One of the things that this does do, though, for you, and this is where the newbies, and this is where I said that it's going to probably ruffle a few feathers. When you look through this and you, you point it, it gives a rough measurement Especially if you're doing automatic, it's no different than that, okay? But it'll give you a rough measurement as the distance, okay? You know, kind of thing. It'll give you a rough idea as to whether your aperture and your shutter speed and your ISO will work based on the little graph that they have in there, the little, little, little numbers kind of thing. But that's where it ends. Will this work? Sure it works. Do I ever do this? Absolutely I do, okay? But I only use it when I'm doing events. I don't use it for the food, and that's what brought this to light, okay? Last week we photographed food, and I, I thought we'd do some product photography today, but I decided to, to put this, this metering business in. Why? Because most professionals do not depend on what comes out of this camera. We set up lighting, and the lighting will come from several different directions. If you, if you joined us last week for the food, the lighting was predominantly coming from the back and some from the front. Sometimes it comes from the side, the top, all over, but it comes in different directions. It's mandatory, mandatory that I know 
how much light this thing is giving me from this backlight or this side light or this light on top or even this light here that's coming directly out. So it's important that you know, and that's where the professional light meter comes into play. And this is the first tool that most pros rely on, depend on. Another way I can explain it to you is this way here. Let's assume you're going to go in and you're going to have your headshot done. And so you get sitting in the chair and you're all comfy there and everything's ready to go. And now your photographer's got no meters. They just take a shot and look out of the back of the screen. I don't know. Let's adjust this and takes a shot. Let's adjust this and takes another shot. And let's adjust this. And you're sitting there. Well, come on, guy. I got things to do. I can't spend the day here doing this, okay? What I do, because when I'm doing a headshot, I'll have a light on the background. I'll have a light coming and hitting the person in the back for separation. I'll have a light from the side giving us the shape of the face. I'll have a reflector, so I've got four light sources. I need to know what each one of them are doing separately and individually. This camera cannot and will not give me that. No matter what I spend, even if I go to like a phase one, $45,000 uh, medium format digital camera, it's still not going to give me that information. This is what I have to use as a meter of this type. But unfortunately, that ruffles the feathers because the young people coming in the industry, they don't want to, they, they, they think they, they bought into the story from Canon and Nikon. You buy my camera and it'll do everything for you. You're going to take great pictures. In fact, I'm seeing a guy on Facebook giving the same kind of crap out, okay, you know. You just buy my camera, just do this, this, and this, and you'll get great pictures every time. This is what the pros do. No, the pros don't, okay. So what has to happen is we have to measure the light. Unfortunately, they can get a tad bit expensive. I did a little research the other day. Today, the cheapest that you can get a light meter is just under $200. Just under $200. I'm talking about a flashlight meter that do both flash and ambient. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Too. Or you can go up to a model like this one here, which I did buy about seven, eight years ago when it was first introduced. And... Um, then I gave about seven, a little over seven hundred for today. This flash, or this meter, flash meter is running eight hundred and fifty-nine dollars on Amazon. Fantastic meter, does everything with shiny shoes, okay? But that—that's what you're talking about. So it's an investment. It's an investment tool. So there's a couple different ways that you can use these, okay? So this way here, let's talk about the meter in here. So you got a good understanding. The meter in here simply is it sends a signal out, the signal goes way out and bounces back. It's called reflective. What do you think is going to happen though if the, your subject that you're photographing is really dark or really a matte color? Are you going to get an accurate bounce back from the reflection? Probably not. Or let's say a super white, a chrome surface, okay? And it's just the light hits it and bounces back all over the place. You're going to get a real accurate uh, exposure meteor there? I don't think so as well. Or it would be just a real bright, shiny white, okay? Like a, like a white plexiglass kind of thing. It's going to bounce back at you, but you're not going to get an accurate meter as well. That's called reflective. That's all these are intended to do. Here, by the aid of this dome, okay, this is called an incident meter. So I can put this under, the, say, the person's chin, Take a reading and see exactly how much light's bouncing on it. I can put this in uh, under the light uh, by my cake or my food or whatever it may be and see how much light is coming out, how much light is going to hit it at that point. Now I know exactly how to set my camera based on what my meters are telling me. It's foolproof. It's idiot proof. It's control, okay? Control. Just that simple. So what I'm saying to you, we're going to kind of cut it short. We're, Man, this 10 minutes goes by fast these days. <laughs> I cut it short. But what, what's, what's happening is what would you rather do? Would you rather go in and have your photograph taken by someone that's got half the tools that they need, be fooling around all the time you're there trying to get it right, or someone that can have this all set up so when you sit down, boom, 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 you can look and see what you got and you're on the way kind of thing, okay? That's the way we do it. That's the way a professional does it. So once again, I'm Bill. This is Detroit Commercial Photo and Video, okay? 
Thanks. Have a great day. Bye now.